Today we're going to take a look at the Nikon D850 focus shift feature, also known as focus stacking. We're going to look at some macro settings and also some landscape. Let's jump right in. Okay, as you can see, I'm using the focus peaking feature to start the initial focus point. I'm going to put it right on the ridges on the edge of the coin. And as you can see, it's also lighting up the millimeter measurements on the yardstick. Okay, for macro, you're going to want your setting to be narrow. It's going to take really short focus steps. Um, to capture detail in each minute section of the image. Uh, landscapes, you're going to be more around the 4 to 5 range depending on your scene. You're going to have to wait till you get on location to kind of figure that out. Our interval until next shot, we're going to set it one second. Exposure smoothing off. Sound photography on, that way it's going to be electronic shutter, not the mechanical. And saves your moving parts and also it's quieter. Okay. And your starting storage folder, I choose new folder, you can choose whatever you want, but what that does is it takes, for, for this instance, we've requested the camera to shoot 250 images. It will put the 250 images into its own folder so they can be easily identified when you go to process them. Okay, we're going to hit start. And it will go through the process and take the 250 images. As you can see on the top of the LCD screen on the camera, the number of images that you have remaining in your focus shift sequence will count down for you. Be advised that the camera does not always take the number of photos that you request, as you will see later in the landscape section. For this set of images, I will be exporting from Lightroom into Helicon Focus. There are 250 images in this stack using a 105 millimeter 2.8 micro Nikkor lens. The D850 appears to have done a really good job at stepping through the focus points on this particular set up. So we're going to right click. We're going to go to export Helicon Focus. Okay now all of our photos are in Helicon Focus and we're going to go ahead and render these images. It's pretty amazing to watch the software work as it puts together each segment. So the conclusion I've come to, um, at least for casual macro photography projects, that the focus shift feature on the D850 actually has done quite a nice job. Um, you know, with proper lighting and different lenses and accessories, um, you could probably do some really great macro work with this particular setup on the 850. Okay, we're going to set up this landscape shot, go in the menu, photo shooting menu, focus shift shooting. We're going to set it up for 25 shots. We're going to set our focus step width to 5. Um, this is going to be a lot different than obviously what we were doing with the macro settings. We're going to hit start. We're going to let it go through its sequence. Again, I've set this up for 25 shots. We'll see exactly how many shots this will give us. Okay, as you can see in the camera setup, I requested that the camera take 25 images. It only took 15. And the first 11 are the only ones that are in focus. You see here in the foreground of the first image, 
leaves are pretty much tack sharp they are a little blurry here on the very edge that's my human error so we're gonna let that slide thank you for your forgiveness um, the first 11 are in focus when you get to image number 12 as you can see the foreground obviously is out but you go to the background it's starting to get a little blurry up here on you see the bark of this tree um, you can't really tell back on this smaller tree as you go to the next image it goes further and further out what the camera is attempting to focus on I don't have an answer for that if anyone has any insight on why it behaves in this manner please let everyone know in the comments below okay we're going to use the first 11 images we're going to right click we're going to open as layers in Photoshop okay we're going to let these images load we'll fast forward through this for the sake of brevity okay you can see our 11 images have come into Photoshop on their own layers we're going to shift click to select all 11 layers we're going to go to edit auto align layers just going to keep it on auto and we'll let Photoshop do its magic okay now that Photoshop has aligned the layers I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of all these layers the reason I do that occasionally there's some artifact where when Photoshop does the auto blend there could be a combination of pieces being in focus and out of focus so if you make a copy of the original layers you can do some manual blending in order to recover those soft areas okay so we're gonna go ahead and take these copies we're gonna go to edit auto blend layers we're gonna stack images seamless tones and colors we're gonna hit OK we're gonna let Photoshop blend the sharpest points of each layer okay Photoshop has completed the blending function you can see here in the foreground the leaves are sharp where that's at 200 percent go back to 100 you can see they're really sharp and you go through the image um, but you go through the entire image it's sharp from front to back and you may say well why go to all that trouble why don't you just use a smaller aperture because for this particular example I used f5.6 there are two reasons for that this particular lens which is the 24 to 70 f28 the um, the non VR version one of its sharpest focal lengths uh, correction one of its sharpest aperture settings is 5.6 that's one reason why you would set it at 5.6 and do focus stacking the other reason is if you use a really small aperture let's say an f16 it's going to look halfway decent I'm not going to try to get overly technical here but when light goes through a really small aperture the light sort of bounces around before it hits your sensor and simply put it makes the images soft so that is the other reason you want to use focus stacking now there are instances where you want to use f16 let's say if you're trying to capture a sun star but that's not the case with this image now one thing I did notice when I zoom in here 
our background here is pretty sharp we have a little bit of a softness right here on this support to the railing okay if you turn that layer off you can see that Photoshop took a took a bite out of this this support and at if you look at layer this layer here 850 2985 now it's sharp but what it does is it causes the background to be blurry right here so you're either gonna have a blurry background or you're gonna have a blurry support however what you can do since we made a copy of each of those layers and we found the sharp point a simple fix would be to go in and just erase the image here now you still may end up I'm doing this really fast so I'm not trying to be really particular you still may end up with a slight halo here um, but if you're real careful you can make it look pretty good um, there are other ways to do it as well it's just whatever suits you um, again you see there's another little blemish here but we can also recover that with one of the other sections that's sharp and it takes a little work but in the end uh, it in my opinion it makes it worth the effort to get a sharp image um, throughout the entire photograph All right, um, if you have any questions um, or comments or suggestions, um, feel free to comment below. Even if you're already familiar with the Focus Shift feature, I hope this may be, um, it has offered a, some additional insight. So I hope this helped you, and if it did, uh, please comment below. All right, that's all for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Please consider subscribing, hit the thumbs up, and hit the little bell for the notification. That way you'll be first to know when a new video comes out. That's all for now. Take care.